What's up y'all, I'm Jordy, and today I've got you a Riolu team I built. Riolu is a goofy little guy, he's just, he's just a silly little puppy, but he has one particular niche that he can actually do, and that is prankster coaching. There are plenty of other fast coachings, but there's no other prankster coaching. Back in Gen 8, he had a niche as well, being able to copycat max guards that were based on Trick Room to set up Trick Room immediately. But that's not what we're doing here. That doesn't quite work anymore without max guard. So what we've got is we're going to take advantage of coaching to the max. Coaching gives its partner a plus one attack and a plus one defense boost, basically a bulk up, and it can't be redirected. It'll only target your partner. So what we've got it's some Pokemon with great special defense stats. And then they buff up their attack and buff up their defense and go crazy. First, we've got Entei with an Assault Vest. Just an absolute monster of a Pokemon. Immune to Intimidate, immune to Fake Out, and just does great damage. We've also got Snarl tacked onto it, just for a little bit of a better matchup into Psy Spam. Next, we've got Water Ogre Pond. This is probably the best partner for Entei, and also one of the best partners for Riolu, since when it terrestrializes, it gets a special defense boost, and then it can go absolutely crazy. Uh, it also has Horn Leech for healing, so it has great sustainability. Uh, our last slot here is actually the third coaching partner with Roaring Moon. It's a speed booster energy set with all the basic stuff. Terra Flying Acrobatics, Knock Off, Tailwind Protect. Roaring Moon has great special defense, great attack, and with booster energy, great speed. So if you get a coaching on that, it can pop off. Entei doesn't have protect, but Ogre Pond, Spiky Shield, and Roaring Moon's protect do allow you to coaching through them. So if you, if you get targeted, you can just protect and get a free coaching off. To round out this team, we've got Sinistra, my favorite Gen 9 Pokemon, just to provide some healing, because when you bulk up with these guys, you want to keep them around as long as possible. And then in the last slot, a Golden Go. I love Golden Go pairing up with Roaring Moon. I think that's just a fantastic pairing. Especially Terra Fairy Golden Go. Because the biggest problem with these defense boosts is getting crit through. So you wouldn't want to lose to a Dark Urshifu. But in best of ones, Terra Fairy Golden Go has proven to be a great answer to that. Because they do not expect it. Alright, well that's the team. Let's get into some battles. Alright, let's see if we can get Riolu to do its stuff. Uh, this looks like uh, the team that won a regional recently. It's Chen Pao Dragonite, Ogre Pond Water, Fluttermane, Raging Bolt, and Entei. So that is very scary. Extreme speed from that Dragonite will go before coaching. So Riolu might not even be able to buff anything. But we do have Protect on Roaring Moon and Ogre Pond, so we could get something going there. Uh, the Entei should also have Extreme Speed, but should be Terra Grass. So how do we want to get after this? I'm still thinking Riolu is the way to go. I need to get something buffed up. I don't think it's Entei. They don't have any Intimidate or Fake Out. Uh, Ogre Pond seems pretty decent, but it would get walled by Dragonite. Roaring Moon seems pretty cool, since it's actually fast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Roaring Moon first. I'll need something for their Raging Bolt. Actually, I don't have much for Raging Bolt on this team, uh, but Entei is pretty good into it. I have the Assault Vest, I have Snarl, I have Stomping Tantrum. And then the biggest threat, obviously Dragonite's a huge threat. Do I want to have Golden Go or Sinistra to handle that? I want Sinistra. I think the redirection could be pretty valuable, and a little bit of healing will help me set up more boosts, potentially. Alright, Riolu, let's go. Let's see what you can do. Come in with all these legendaries and somehow come out on top. That's a cool trainer card. They got a black Charizard. Alright, who are you starting out with? Entei and Ogre Pond. That's a cool combo. But we've got Riolu and Roaring Moon. So Roaring Moon isn't actually threatened immediately. I could throw off an attack. I want to go for a coaching. I don't want to terrestrialize, But I want to do some damage. 
Uh, I do, I think a plus one Terra Flying Acrobatics would pick up Entei. I do not. Ogre Pond could redirect. So knockoff wouldn't do much to it. But yeah, I'm going to coach. And I'm just going to go for a knockoff into Entei. And they are terrestrializing immediately. Maybe it's the Ogre Pond. They don't want to take an acrobatics right away. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. But you're not going to have much damage into the Roaring Moon this way. Unless you're just redirecting and you know I'm going to knock off. No. Okay, I get the coaching. Let's see what you can do with a bulked up Roaring Moon. We get the knockoff. Amazing damage. Entei almost goes down. And it's Assault Bested. They throw a Terra Ivy Cudgel into Roaring Moon. Which does nothing. Thank you for the coaching. And a Sacred Fire into Roaring Moon. And they get the burn. That's a little bit unfortunate. But what can you do? Alright. What I can do now is I can quick guard, blocking that Entei's extreme speed. And I could either pick it off or I could do damage to the Ogre Pond. I think I would like to damage the Ogre Pond because I have my own extreme speed in the back. <clears throat> So I'm going to quick guard, and I'm going to acrobatics that Ogre Pond. <coughs> quick guard comes out first. It's actually plus four on Riolu. Yes, we all saw that E-speed coming. And then we get an acrobatics into Ogre Pond, which does basically nothing. Okay. And Ivy Cudgel is just into Riolu, I'm guessing. It is. Okay. Now, if I had to guess, I don't think, I do not think they're going to go for another extreme speed. I think they think I can't do enough damage anyway. Would it be worth launching another coaching and hitting Entei? If I quit guard and attack Entei, I guarantee a hit off, so I think that's better. And it'll be an acrobatic, no, it'll be a knockoff. If they swap, I'd rather remove an item. Just another quit guard. Let's see if you were even going to do it. No, they weren't even going to do it. I didn't have to do that. And Entei is down. Okay. Who do you pick to take out? You don't take out anybody. That's an interesting play. Okay. Roaring Moon is still here hanging on, and I can still get up to plus two, which would be neutral damage. And they have a Flutter Mane. Is their Flutter Mane speed boosting by chance? Protosynthesis. It is speed boosting. So it should be faster than my Roaring Moon. I could save something here if I wanted to, but if I swap in Entei, it's probably a Dazzling Gleam and maybe an Ivy Cudgel, so it probably wouldn't be worth it. I think I have to... I think I have to accept defeat on Rayolu here. I'll just go for a feint, do a little bit of chip damage. I am faster than their Flutter Main. That's awesome. That should have been a Tailwind then. Hmm. 
But a little bit of damage into Ogre Pond never hurt. And you go for a Horn Leech into Nobody. Okay. Let's see what we can do with Entei and Sinistra now. The Ogre Pond has Terrastalized, so Rage Powder is on the table. And I don't know what their Ogre Pond speed stat looks like. We have 139 on this Entei. That's not particularly fast. I think I will go for a Sacred Fire into Fluttermane. Terastalize Macha Gacha? No. Rage Powder. Yeah, I have to go for the Rage Powder. Yeah, because it's going to be Shadow Ball, and it's going to be Ivy Cudgel. And I think Sinistra can take both of those, but we can't let any of those go at Entei. It's just a Dazzling Gleam. Okay, that's fine. That doesn't do anything to Entei. And it is an Ivy Cudgel. Great. I think they wanted to cover the Entei going for a Terra. Oh, and Fluttermane lives on one? No, it doesn't. It's gone. Good. Good, good, good. Goodbye, Fluttermane. Now this Ogre Pond, of course, is still very scary, but the Chen Pao, less scary. Though actually, Sinistra is quite low. Could a Sacred Sword take out Sinistra? I don't think so. And what is our strongest move on Ogre Pond? Probably Extreme Speed. So I'm thinking an Extreme Speed into Ogre Pond. This is tough. This is really tough. They're expecting the Rage Powder. But I still think it's the right play. Chen Pao just protects. Okay. We get off our extreme speed. It almost takes out Ogre Pond. Rage Powder away any shots that you got. It is Horn Leech. which heals before Rocky Helmet. Okay. My extreme speed into that is so obvious, but do I do it? They're probably asking themselves, is it worth it to go for a spiky shield here? And this is just a coin flip. I either extreme speed that, or I attack the Chen Pao. They know that if they spiky shield and catch a sacred fire, they lose. But if they attack with both, they have a better chance. I think if I was in their position, I would attack with Ogre Pond. I really need to flip a coin here. I'm going to Sacred Fire the Chen Pao. And I got it wrong. They did exactly what I would do. Alright, Riolu, let's get it popping. They've got Sinistra, Mousehold, Hisuian Arcanine, Galarian Moltres, Iron Hands, and one of the Urshifus. Now the Water Urshifu would make a lot of sense here. Finish out the Fire Water Grass Core, they already have a Dark type. So I'm thinking it's the Water one. Which means Sinistra could be pretty good. However, they've got a Moltres. Moltres is very scary. 
Entei could snarl it down. Golden Go is Terra Fairy, which could do pretty well into it. In fact, this might be a Golden Go centered game. Golden Go's main fear would be that Arcanine. If I go Golden Go and Ogre Pond, I should be able to set that up nicely. If Golden Go. So I, I also. Okay, I have Ogre Pond and Sinistra. I don't know if they bring Water Urshifu. Roaring Moon in the back for some speed boosts would be nice. And do, do I want Entei? I said Entei would be good against Moltres, but I don't know if I actually want it here. Against Water Urshifu, Hisui, and Arcanine? I think Riolu in the back could boost something later in the game. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to put Riolu in the back. Usually I'd be leading Riolu. But I think if I put him in the back, that'll catch my opponent off guard. I have to position this right, though. I can't coaching a Golden Go. That would do nothing. But I can faint and make it rain. Alright. Moltres. And the little mouse guy. Mouse hold. Shiny Moltres. I actually like it when it's not shiny a little bit better. I don't think that they're going to go straight for a dark move. I think I am free to Nasty Plot right away without terastalizing and possibly bring in roaring moon that'll get me some speed control yeah I'm gonna play aggressive I'm gonna nasty plot and I'm gonna bring in my tailwind user I don't think I'm gonna need redirection right away even if the mouse hold was a trick and is one of the offensive sets, they're not going to go for a pop bomb into the Golden Go. That doesn't make any sense. They are an offensive set. They pop bomb the Roaring Moon. Oh. 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 That's actually insane. Okay. And it only... Okay, Golden Go is faster anyway, but what? What? Huh? And then we got a nasty plot from this thing, too. Okay, well, that was crazy. It's definitely Ogre Pond now. What the heck? Terastalizing, making it rain, getting rid of that mouse hold, and just throwing up a spiky shield. That's the play. Wow! Props to them. Pop Bomb Mousehold is super cool. Alright, our Terra is coming out, so I guess they're not going to Terra the Mousehold here. No one expects the Fairy Terra. And I don't think Plus Two Make It Rain is going to ever take out a Moltres, but... Oh, it's just going for a Helping Hand. Well, you're not going to hit my Ogre Pond. And I'm going to move first so you're not going to flinch me. And your mouse is gone. There's no way your focus session hits seven pot bombs. Yes, you're gone. Now Moltres has a helping hand. And Moltres is at plus three. But Golden Go, you can take this, right? Let's see, do they get back above half too? No, they're not above half. Good. Fiery Wrath as expected. And that does over half to Golden Go. Wow. Wow. 194 down to 84. That does. Wow. That does too much. That does 110. Wow. Okay. Moltres is no joke. Feral Palmas comes in. Yeah, you have the free fake out onto Ogre Pond if you want it. But my Ogre Pond is even faster. So I can make it rain to take out Moltres, or I can Ivy Cudgel to hopefully take out Moltres. Yeah. You can fake out one, but you can't fake out both. 
Take your pick. And I hope you pick Ogre Pond, because I know Golden Go can take it out. I don't know that Ogre Pond can take it out. Alright, what you gonna do? Oh, you're gonna do neither. You're gonna let... Okay. You're gonna let me take Moltres. And I guess Heavy Slam my Goldengo? That does absolutely nothing, as it should. And no, just a Drain Punch into Ogre Pond. Interesting. Interesting choice. And they are basically back at full. How am I going to damage that thing? I could Nasty Plot up to plus two and throw a Shadow Ball. Let's focus on what else they got first. It is Urshifu, the Treasure Hunter. It is Water Urshifu, the Treasure Hunter. Okay. Making it rain has no value here. But I think a Shadow Ball... Maybe a Shadow Ball and a Horn Leech into their Urshifu? Would their Urshifu be willing to risk an attack here? Hopefully it is. Let's find out. They have U-turn, their choice. But we hang on. We get the Horn Leech and the Shadow Ball. Excellent. Excellent. Good job, Ogre Pond. Now what is Iron Hands going to do? Do you actually have Heavy Slam? Because I would be perfectly happy with you taking out Golden Go next. It is Heavy Slam. Okay. Alright, cool. Golden Go, you did great. I think you put Riolu into a perfect position. Let's bring him out. Alright, let's coach the Ogre Pond. And let's just spiky shield. I don't think they think Riolu's a threat. I think they'll go after Ogre Pond. We'll get a little bit of free chip and an extra coaching off. In case you didn't know, coaching goes through Protect. And they do actually target Riolu. Interesting. They know who the real threat is out here. <laughs> well, alright, that's fine by me. I'm going to go up to plus two then. And I think it's a little more optimal to heal up a bit with Horn Leech. Plus two Horn Leech into a plus two Ivy Cudgel probably does it. Take advantage of this plus two defense and steal some of their massive HP stat. Ooh, yes, that does half. Excellent. Now even with some Drain Punch healing, we should be good. And they just Wild Charge. And it does not crit. And so Riolu is going to coaching a third time. Let's go! <laughs> Let him do it. He's just a silly little guy. You don't gotta run away. He ran away. Alright, Riolu. Good job being a silly little guy. Let's get another one in. Alright, let's see what Riolu can do here. They've got an Urshifu, Entei, Golden Go, Tornadus, Water Ogre Pond, and Blood Moon Ursaluna. Since they have the Water Ogre Pond Entei combo, I'm thinking that's Dark Urshifu. Dark Urshifu is very scary. I'm terrified of Dark Urshifu. And they have Tornadus. I think we might want to go with our own speed control, or do we want to just try to pop off with Riolu? Riolu is fun. But Riolu with who? Riolu with Ogre Pond can hit all of those really hard, except I guess their Ogre Pond, but if we're buffing, we'll be alright. Yeah, uh, I want Roaring Moon in the back to be able to handle 
that Urshifu and get some speed control of our own. And then I would like Sinistra here, but it can't handle a few of those. Is Golden Go the play? Not really anything that takes much from Make It Rain. So maybe it's just Entei. A little bit of extreme speed in the back? That could work. All right, we're bringing Rayolu and the three coaching students. Okay. Riolo, I guess that's putting a lot of pressure on you. I'm bringing all three legendaries you need to help out. They don't know what they're doing. They need your help. They're looking to you for guidance. You're going to have to be more than a silly little guy here. They got the shiny Mecha Titar. All right, who's their lead? Entei and Urshifu. It is dark. I finally got one right. Hooray. Now, Entei is probably real scared. Probably real, real scared. It's probably terrified. I think what I need to do is coaching and throw the biggest possible Ivy Cudgel at that Urshifu. I need that Urshifu gone now. That Urshifu causes problems. If I can delete the Urshifu, I will be very happy. So let's do it. Sending it turn one. We're going to put on the mask. We're going to get the big bubbly stick. And we're going to hit him with it. And we're going to hope it works. Now one way I see this going wrong is they have they are faster than Ogre Pond. Wicked Blow, Terra Normal E Speed Double Up possibly. They are terrestrializing. It is the Entei. But it's into grass, so that's just defensive. Who knows what they're going for. It's not extreme speed, that's a good sign. So we get our defense boost, we get our attack boost. They just U-turn out. Oh, they were scared of us? Does that imply their choice scarf or Shifu? Interesting. And they go into Tornadus. Well, hopefully we can delete Tornadus then. Big bubbly attack. We confirm we're faster than Entei, which is also nice. And Tornadus gets deleted. Critical hit. Haha. -ha. Goodbye. And a sacred fire into Riolu. No, Riolu. Do the fates say Riolu can stay or does he have to go? He has to go. I salute you, Riolu. You did great. We're going to make sure that attack boost and defense boost win us this game. Now, they have a Grass Entei, so both of these are great options. I'm going to go into Roaring Moon because it threatens their Urshifu, though. Yeah. If they want to bring Urshifu back out, which they did, they are now extremely threatened because they have two flying weaknesses. And they're just going to have to deal with it. Now, I think the play here, my Entei should be able to beat their Entei. So I think the play is still to eliminate their Urshifu, which we haven't technically confirmed as Choice Scar. But I'm going to Tailwind. And I'm going to throw an Ivy Cudgel at it. If that eliminates it from the game, we are in a great position. They go for an extreme speed. It basically bounces off. They go for a sucker punch. That does a lot. But we are okay. We get up the tailwind. And they both moved, and they didn't take out the Ogre Pond. Good job, Riolu. Defense boost coming in clutch, and Urshifu is gone. All right. Goodbye. And last, they have an Ursa Luna. That's a little scary. Just a little bit. Ogre Pond is not going to be able to take an E-Speed. So it's really not going to do much of anything. 
I'm gonna knock off their Ursaluna. I could spiky shield to try to get a little bit of chip on the Entei. But honestly, leaving Ogre Pun in isn't for the best anyway. So I'm just going to go with a follow me. This will make sure that whatever Entei does has to go toward Ogre Pond. They do just extreme speed. That was probably at Ogre Pond anyway. Alright, good job Ogre Pond. Moon and Entei should clean this up. Knock off into the Ursaluna. Does about a third. No throat spray for you. But you go straight for a Blood Moon. That does insane damage. Wow. Alright, now I have an Entei of my own. They likely want to throw an extreme speed at Roaring Moon, so I can easily protect that and just hit them with a Sacred Fire. We're Assault Vest on my Entei. So I don't think an Earth Power from Blood Moon will take us. Yep, they're just being predictable with the extreme speeds. I probably could have got that chip last turn. That would have been nice. Sacred Fire, super effective. Leaves you super low. But we have the faster extreme speed. No. And we have Acrobatics into Ursaluna and extreme speed into their Entei. How come you can burn my Riolu, but I can't burn your Entei, and you can just live that? That doesn't seem fair. That does not seem fair. But hopefully we can do enough damage here. Acrobatics. A Blood Moon into Entei. Entei is gone. Good job, Entei. And now this comes down to the wire. This is coming down to it. If we can't pick up with this acrobatics, we can't take this hit. They look like they're at about a third. So this is definitely a damage roll. Ah, and it's not in our favor! Both of these guys living on the red, no! Oh, I'm so sorry, Riolu. Let's get in one more. Alright, Riolu is not the easiest thing to use, but I'm going to try to get another W here. They've got Thunderous, Enamorous, they've got Whimsicott, Raging Bolt, Iron Hands, and Iron Moth. It's the contrary version of Enamorous, most likely, with the Eerie Impulse from Thunderous. Uh, so careful not to lead any special... Oh, our only special attackers immune to Eerie Impulse anyway. Golden Go actually seems really solid here, except against that moth. Entei actually seems pretty good too into most of those things. So I think this is an Entei game. I think this is definitely an Entei game. Uh, we're going to go Entei, Riolu. Thunderous scares me a little bit because it might have Taunt. But I think we'll be okay. Uh, is this a game for Sinistra? It might be. Uh, what's Entei's biggest... What's the biggest threat to Entei? The biggest threat to Entei is probably just the Enamorous. So honestly, I think we do want Sinistra. And then probably not Raging, but probably Ogre Pond here. Yeah, this should work. Firewater Grass Core, a little bit of healing, a little bit of coaching. I think this should work. This seems fun. Okay. Now, are they just going to pop off with Enamorous immediately? Try to go for some eerie impulses? Uh, Enamorous does learn Earth Power. No, they just go Whimsicott, Raging Bolt. Very interesting. So the Whimsicott can basically be ignored. The Raging Bolt does not have a booster energy. Uh, I think it might be the play to just go for a plus one stomping tantrum into that Raging Bolt. That's the play I like the best here. 
I will try to coach up Entei. If they have taunt, they do have taunt. But I'm not going to get that. That is okay. But we get off the Stomping Tantrum. It's still super effective. And it does basically nothing. Wow. Wow. That did no damage. Yeah, that did absolutely nothing. That's terrifying. <sighs> wow. All right, let's go for another Stomping Tantrum. And do I think they would protect here? I think they might. I think I'm going to go for the Faint Stomping. After Entei takes a little bit of damage would be a better time to bring in Sinistro. But wow! That thing is too bulky! Okay, I don't think the health bar moved. They just set up Tailwind. That's alright. And they just throw off a Dragon Pulse. It does about half. And we get off another Stomping Tantrum. That one does... That seems like a much better roll that time. Alright, they know we have Faint and Stomping. So I don't think they'll protect. I think they're going to let us get another Stomping Tantrum. Because we're going to go to Sinistra. And we're going to heal up. I think this is a decent play. And then, even if we don't knock it out, it'll be an extreme speed range. And it's a much bigger threat to everything than Whimsicott. So we need to get rid of this Raging Bolt. All right, Entei, enjoy your matcha. It's a Moon Blast. And another Dragon Pulse. It does good damage, but not enough. And Stomping Tantrum takes it. Yes. Okay, the biggest threat is now gone. Thank you. Woo. Now who do you have? You have Iron Moth. Iron Moth. Is your Iron Moth about to terastalize? Is that your plan here? I could totally see that being the plan. So do I not go for Stomping Tantrum in that case? I could throw out a Snarl. I think a Snarl is a decent play here. Along with... Terastalizing... And Rage Powder. Yeah, it could be a fire move into Sinistra. Or it could be... I don't even know what else it would do. I have not seen an Iron Moth in so long. Absolutely anything could happen here. And we're Terastalizing first. I guess they're not Terastalizing the Moth. And they're not protecting it? That's interesting. So I could have Stomping Tantrum the whole time. A Sunny Day. And just a Heat Wave. Doesn't take out either of us. Good. Iron Moth has weakened up a little bit. <sighs> I think the play now is probably to extreme speed the Moth, soften it up a bit, because they still have Terra. But I think I need to get Sinistra out. Do I? I think it'd be nice to get a Trick Room. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be nice. Let's give it a shot. Extreme Speed does about half to Moth. Very good. Moon Blast into Entei doesn't take it. Interesting. And they just Heat Wave. So I do get the Trick Room. 
Amazing. That's awesome. Iron Moth loses a little more to eight of its HP to its life orb, and we get up Trick Room. Just in time for Tailwind to run out, of course. But this Ogre Pond should, should be slower than that Moth. They have Sun Up, though. Alright, uh, who do you think has a higher base attack? Iron Moth or Whimsicott? I'm gonna find out if I can in the next 30 seconds. Oh, Iron Moth has 70 attack. That's definitely gonna be higher than Whimsicott. Alright. Then we are going for an Ivy Cudgel into Moth. And we're gonna get as much healing as we can out of that Moth before it goes down. Now, would they protect the Moth here? Would they taunt the Sinister here? Both of those are possible. But no, they do neither. Alright. Let's see how much we get out of that. And they didn't Terrastalize Moth either. That's interesting. We get off our Ivy Cudgel. Bop. Goodbye, Moth. And then what do you got? Just a Moonblast into Sinistra. That is fine. Oh, but we get a special attack drop. You're just getting those left and right, aren't you? Oh, great. An Iron Hands, and we're in Trick Room. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Spiky Shield into Riolu. This way we can hopefully get off of Coaching. I don't see them doubling the Sinistra slot. And we'll have Sinistra's special attack back to normal, and we'll have a Hospitality for later when one of these goes down. Hopefully Riolu's the one who comes out again. Now they're finally terrestrializing. It's the Iron Hands. I guess it's into Grass. It's into Electric. Wow, they're going for damage. Okay. Okay, I get it. Hit this Spiky Shield. Yes, they do hit the Spiky Shield. And now since we're in Trick Room, Coaching should be able to go before the Taunt. They just Moonblast Riolu. You can take that, Riolu. You're fine. You're fine. You only need the one HP anyway. Alright. Two turns of Trick Room. Last turn of Sun. We're gonna go for a Horn Leech into Iron Hands. And we are gonna coach up this Ogre Pond. Give it the defense boost. Give it the attack boost. Tank this hit from Iron Hands, hopefully. It will hit really hard. But we take about half. That's great. Now, where's the Whimsicott coming after? Ooh, and great damage into Iron Hands. That's going to heal us so much. Yes. The Whimsicott Moonblast is just into Riolu. Okay. You respect his game. I get it. I get it. He is the real threat. And the sun is gone, and Sinistra is in. And Ogre Pond is all the way back at full. Now, I could protect to stall out the last turn of Trick Room. But I don't think that's the play. I think I just throw another Horn Leech at Iron Hands and Rage Powder. The worst case here would be them critting Ogre Pond and Oko-ing it. And then Sinistra being unable to defeat a Whimsicott. But if I Rage Powder, the Iron Hands has to go here. It'll take some Rocky Helmet Chip. It might knock itself out. And then we should be good. Whimsicott chooses to set up another Sunny Day, so they're going for the long game. Alright, they Drain Punch into Sinistra, so they're not going to go down to that. 
But that's fine. You will probably be going down to this Horn Leech. So they just don't want me to be able to Ivy Cudgel them. So they put up the sun. Sunny Day, Taunt, Tailwind, Moonblast. Goodbye, Iron Hands. Alright, so even with a crit, Ivy Cudgel's 150. So in the sun, it's the same as Horn Leech. And Horn Leech gets me recovery. So that is the obvious play. We just Horn Leech, and they just Moonblast, and we see who wins. And considering I'm a plus one Ogre Pond, and I'm getting healing, I think I know which way this is going to go. And this is all thanks to Riolu. Don't forget it. We just click the win button until the win happens. I think that one did even less, Whimsicott. Whimsicott, where are all your friends? What's what's the problem? You you can't you can't handle this all on your own? They're not quitting though. They have faith in this Whimsicott. Alright, and that is GG's. Alright, let's show this rental code one more time. Bye, Wimmy. Alright, and here we are back with the rental code. Coaching Riolu is so much fun. Uh, I had a blast with this. It's not easy to use, and people for some reason think Riolu's the threat and try to target it down. I guess they're probably right. Uh, this thing used to learn Follow Me, so if it had that, it would actually be pretty viable in my opinion. Uh, let me know if you disagree with that, though. Uh, so there's the rental code for you in the top corner if you want to try out Riolu. In addition to the battles you saw today, this Riolu team also got me into Master Ball with four wins straight. I wasn't recording that, though. Uh, but anyway, I'm Jordy, and uh, alright, peace.